You, you ready for this, boys? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Check it. check this one out. That was a Coors Light, baby. What's it? Oh, I thought that was a lighter. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, are you smoking? I just started smoking here? a cigarette Fucking indoors. Let's go. <laughs> it sounded like you biting the metal head off a lighter, too, not even lighting it up. Eddie's like, check this out. You just hear metal <laughs> crunching like he's eating a lighter. Eddie, did you ever come to my house in Menominee when it, I had like the 200 Amazon lighters that you could just blow up by throwing at the ground? No, but you brought you brought them to Par 9. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, oh, that's I right, saw yeah. That. Jakey, they're having a special... Oh, by the way, our guest today... <laughs> oh, yeah. Welcome back to another quarantine episode of the Gus Netty Podcast. Today, we're joined by one of our best boys ever, Nakey Jakey. Yay. Scrappy Slappy. <laughs> that's the poll of you changing Boys your name. Was, instead of Nakey Jakey, that's you're my, switching to Slappy that's, Scrappy. <laughs> that's my fucking Star Wars bounty character, Scrappy <laughs> Slappy. <laughs> Oh man, let's rotate back to the <laughs> so you threw them on the ground like they're the they're the fucking like well, I don't know what they're called, but you know the pop things you throw them at the ground they go. Oh so it's yeah, basically yeah, that. they're like adult <laughs> adult <laughs> adult snapper things. They were like Amazon was having Snappers. some shitty special yeah. where they had uh, for for twelve dollars you could get a hundred like full size lighters and they were so crappy and the the plastic was so thin that even if you just tossed it like twenty feet in the air and it landed on the ground, all the pressurized butane would go. And just like pop out really loud, so I just got a couple hundred of them, and then we just go out in the parking lot and huck them up in the air and like blow them up on trash cans and shit. You're like, I got a couple hundred of them, and then we killed my neighbor. <laughs> I remember actually we were on the set of Far Nine, Gus, and you yeah. were like, you held one up, and you were like, you know what happens if you throw these really high in the air and they like land on the ground? And I was like, I'm gonna guess they explode because like what else could happen with these? Ah, a wise one. <laughs> I, I think I said either it's going to blow up or it'll crack. Those are the two options. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like any other possible thing is going to happen. Like A plus B equals C. So. Uh, J- uh, Jakey, oh, you you're in the big fun. city right now. How Are you alive? What the fuck is happening over there? Yeah, dude. It's like corona stuff aside it's great my apartment's great my view is killer it's like a beautiful blue sunny like 66 degree day and i'm not going outside like i briefly stepped outside and i saw a bunch of people on the sidewalk and also like just down the street like outside places and i was like okay i know it's nice out and i had the same inclination as all of you did that i wanted to go outside but also like this is why people are getting sick because you don't have any fucking self control. Mm-hmm. So, oh, I get it. You know, New Yorkers can't be stopped. <laughs> we, we we wild out here. But <laughs> You've it's been like, out there a week. I know like, like, you. I'm bleeding New York out like, here. <laughs> Dude, I, the second I got here, I sprinted in the middle of the street just so a taxi could hit me and I could go, hey, I'm walking it. <laughs> Except for my Midwestern ass was like, oh. <laughs> the taxi, hit, taxi hit me and I went, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Can I suck your cock? I'm sorry. I don't I'm think sorry. that's a Midwest oh thing. from the Midwest. I don't, I don't recognize that yeah, one. Yeah, no. See, I'm, I'm, from the, I'm from the real Midwest. <laughs> it's just a family thing. So you wouldn't understand, dude. It's a, it's a family thing. Um, but no, it's... Dude, I, I I mean, I love it. Like, not going to lie. When I first moved here, it was super rough. I, like, still don't have... I moved here with just a checked bag, and then all my shit's on a moving mm-hmm. truck. And the truck still hasn't got here. But luckily, in the meantime, it was like... I went and bought a bed, which obviously, like, second night, I got a bed, which was a huge game changer. And now I have, like, a desk and a chair, because I needed that shit anyways, and a TV. So it's like... Other than not having all my production stuff to make videos or songs which luckily a friend is letting me borrow a microphone it's like i you know i'm getting by Mm -hmm. i'm chilling i have food now but i just i miss like i don't know there's not even anything that i need need like maybe some dishes or cookware but it's just the comfort of having no yeah of course i knew if all my shit was here even in boxes even if it was just like you know my records or like a bunch of old video games or something just like seeing it in my place i'd be like oh that's like 
this is my home. Like my mom sent me my Pendleton blanket that I couldn't pack. And that instantly was like, oh yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah, my no, home. dude, that same thing happened for me when we moved out here. And, uh, I brought the desk that I used to make videos with and like, uh, use, like do homework on, um, from my old basement here. And the second that was constructed, which Tony did for me as a favor, uh, it was like instantly like, oh, this is like my room a little bit. Yeah, no, dude. And it, I, it was like, it was weird moving here. It was, I moved here right before it got serious. So when I first got here, it was this kind of thing in the air of like all my friends that I have here and just kind of like the public were, it was like in the air, you know, that we all knew it could get bad, but it wasn't mm-hmm. quite bad. So I was still like, oh, Jake, let's go get brunch here. Let's go skateboarding. Let's do this. And then as the days went by, it was like more of my friends started leaving the city and I started paying more attention to like how serious it was. And then it was like, oh, also, my stuff isn't going to get here for, like, probably a month. And then things got, like, real dark for a couple days. But now I've, like, I'm, like, ordering stuff off Ikea. I've actually been, like, productive on music shit. Like, played the shit out of Doom Eternal, which I'm sure mm. we'll talk about. But it was, it was like, really good and then really fucking bad. Like, not going to lie, super depressed. And then the past, like, three or four days, like, because self-quarantine isn't that much different from my typical Same. lifestyle, it's, like... Oh, I have a TV that I can use as a monitor and a desk and a chair and a microphone and some blankets in my closet so I can record music. And it's like, all right, I'm, yeah. I'm chilling. Like I got some food, got a bed. I'm like actually staying mad creative in it. Um, um, yeah, like I said, I'm like ordering furniture off of Ikea and like going to get rugs and like going back to like being excited about my place and like envisioning how it'll be once this all blows over. And that's like, that's the light at the end of the tunnel. It's like, Oh no, remember why you moved here? Like just yeah, stick with yeah, it. Dude. Um, yeah, that, I, again, the timing is so bum on that. It's like that, that honeymoon phase, you just have to postpone for now. I can't imagine what that's like. Yeah, totally. But all of my, uh, all my friends have been super sweet. Cause like moving out here, I mean, there is only, not only like there's like three friends that I'm I'm like pretty close with now just from visiting but even the the like friends of friends that I briefly met like um shout out to them they've been like super sweet like one of my buddies Nick who I only really hung out with him like we spent like a full day hanging out and skating and doing other stuff but he's been reaching out a lot just being like dude I just can't stop thinking about like how shitty timing that is and I don't want this to like have a bad taste in your mouth and like if you need anything blah 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 so like Big shout out to all family and friends. Like everyone has been great. Like my sister sent me a quilt the other day, which is like so mm. bomb and like a bunch of snacks and shit. Like it's been, it, it was rough, but it's like, I'm actually been mad positive lately, which Fuck is yeah. awesome. Getting it yeah, that's around. the best. Yeah. Cause especially I know, um, there was a, there was a, the kind of mismatch of a couple of days where I know Gus and I were kind of like panic prepping here and you still had to like go mm-hmm. get like pillows <laughs> Um, and mm-hmm. I remember we talked yeah. on the phone where you were like, you were like bringing them back and it was just so weird. It was such a weird disconnect of like things you still had to do things that made you go out and it just like sucks. Yeah. So it's, it's shitty timing, but yeah, I'm glad you're all set up now, at least, uh, to the level where you can hang yeah. out and play some games and shit. No, totally. No, it's, it's like the, uh. I'm actually having moments where I forget about quarantine, which I feel like is the sign of oh, I'm like, you know, moving always sucks at first. But like the other day I had to, um, I was running to Best Buy to get a USB hub because I forgot one and like to have like my audio interface, a mouse, a keyboard, and uh, like my micro USB like keyboard, like a little MIDI keyboard that I brought in my bag. I don't have enough USB ports. So I was like, oh, I'll just run to Best Buy real quick, like before shit gets really bad. And when I was walking there, I like, it was a nice day and I was just listening to music and I like know my way around my neighborhood now. And I realized it was like, oh, for the first time, like, I don't feel like a stranger Mm. here. Like, I feel like this is, this is my home, like this neighborhood in New York. Like, oh my God, I'm like, I'm doing it. I'm living here. And it was great. And then I got to the Best Buy and they're closed and there's just a huge line outside because they're only doing like the curbside delivery. And like, it all came back to me of like, what? is actually going Mm. on right now and i went back to being kind of like oh scary Mm -hmm. all right i should probably try to get home but there was a brief like sliver of a preview of what my life will be like after it's over and it was like okay sick like shit sucks right now but like just hold out it'll be like remember why you're doing this it'll Mm -hmm. be good yeah totally 
Well, what do you say we but, we anyways. hit up a little preguntas, boys? Does that sound good to you, fellows? No, uh, no. <sighs> I, um, <laughs> no. So, anyways, what I was saying, <laughs> art teacher in high school. What a what an asshole, <laughs> bitch! Oh my god. <laughs> Let's talk about me, Jakey. Did you have some thoughts on Doom Eternal you'd like to share? Oh, too many, man. <laughs> too many. Hon- honestly, like we, me and Eddie were already talking about it a bit, and like I could. It's one of those games where I could fucking go on forever. But like, bullet points are Jesus Christ. It's so good. Um, was briefly talking with Eddie because he just started it and I finished it yesterday. Of like, as good as the game is, the first impression actually is the first super level great. just like, feels story. It feels like you're just kind of like thrown yeah. in and not in a good thrown in way. You're just kind of like, mm-hmm. okay, exactly. Mm-hmm. No, it's not like a. It's not. I'm trying to think of a good example, like maybe Halo Two or something like that, where you're thrown in, but you know exactly what happened between the games or something like that. Like this one is very much just like. All right, you're Doom guy, and you're here, and you're killing, and it's like I would have liked a little like bit, a little more theatrics like a, for the beginning, other than just like a quick montage. Yeah, like the intro, well, thing the theatrics is of that like with the music and everything, and like, like fucking rule. That was, sick, but yeah, yeah, it's like the moment but, of getting into it is less of like a thing. But I guess it goes straight into the gameplay. So I don't know. But true, see, that's what I was gonna say. It's like to the game's credit, the goal is very clearly like, okay, we have to teach the player bit by bit, but we're gonna try to do that as fast as we can. And the trade off is that like you just have a bunch of really annoying tutorial prompts, but at the same time, there's not really a good way to teach the player all of the things because there's like a billion things in that Mm -hmm. game. Also, it's like even my biggest criticism isn't even a real Mm -hmm. criticism. (laughs) I gotta say though, Doom along with most new games what's with the small text dude i'm playing it on a I tv hate the small text. Dude, it. Gus, I'm, i was playing yeah. uh, doom uh, in my bed from my tv you know not a far distance or jake you know my room too it's like not super far yeah. i had to get up to see what buttons i needed to click because they'd be in green and then like the l2 would be in like black but l2 and r2 looked the same because it was so small so i'd have to get out of bed and walk up to the screen to see it and it's just like What's with God of War had it like a bunch mm-hmm. of Ubisoft games? That was had what it. I was gonna say. God that of War was, fixed it though, right? That was my turning point, man. Yeah, they they patched it, but it like still barely changed it. Like I, I didn't matter because at that point I knew. But like that, I mean, you know me when it. I first I got God of War and a PS4 Pro and a pretty big TV all at the same time, and like I didn't even end up like going back and playing God of War till years later. And I think a big part of that was like same issues it was just so annoying with the text and the game trying to teach you like these are runes these are upgrades these are these and it's like like i get aesthetically maybe it looks better but like why is this Mm -hmm. so small like when you're doing qa testing sure you have like a computer monitor in front of you but like don't they know that most people are playing it on a tv on a couch like not everyone is 2015 vision like i do because i got lasik shout out to you're gonna flex lasik on us huh jakey yeah, Maybe. I can see my own nipples now. <laughs> it's like, hold on. Finally, finally found them, some bitches. Some bitch. It was really, they just like, Jakey needed to take a shirt off for the first time after LASIK. He's like, whoa, <laughs> were my nipples here the whole time? <laughs> <laughs> the, the fucking surgeon's like, all right, go ahead and lift your shirt. And I'm like, wait, wh- why? You gave me eye surgery. He's like, just, like, <laughs> just like he goes, oh, he's like, yep. What? Every patient comes in, sees her nips, sheds a tear. So I don't know why he's. Like, I remember so. my first shirt lift. <laughs> <laughs> remember when I first saw my tit yeah, in twenty twenty? Yeah. Dude, my on the real though, my surgeon actually like the I I uh, I don't know if I should say the name of it. I guess I don't need to. But the the actual doctor that like the facility is named after, who like did my surgery, he was like. Like, jokes aside, he was an older, but, like, kind of weird, and, like, me and my mom were like, what's this guy's deal? Like, right before my surgery, he was telling us a story about how, like, his girlfriend, when he was super in love with her, when he was in college, left him for another man, and that now he, like, gave that guy LASIK surgery and talked to me about how much money that (laughs) guy made and that he's not doing good, and I thought the story was going in the direction of, like, yeah, so I fucked up his eyes. (laughs) Luckily, it didn't. It didn't, but, like, the whole time he was talking to me, my mom was behind him, so he couldn't see her, but her eyes were just big, and she was just, like, mouthing, like, Jesus Christ. He's like, 
was like, I switched his eyes with his nipples. <laughs> <laughs> so, other reason why they call me the nipple doctor. Uh, let's just say that guy's got milk coming out of his face. You see a guy walking milk. around with goat eyes. Just know that's the man that fucked my girlfriend. <laughs> Goat eyes. <laughs> Yo, that's my Star Wars name. Oh, that's Master Goat Eyes. <laughs> Just turn and have those fucked eyes. What's up? <laughs> oh, what's up? And they're just like flopping and <laughs> slapping his cheeks, just like long fucking nipples. Um, how about, what do you say we get into some so preguntas? Gross. Guys, I got an idea. How about we open up yeah. some preguntas? Uh, Yo, it's, all right, so I got this idea. What if we answer Guys, some Guys, I've got the wackiest idea. Give me goat eyes. <laughs> Three of them. Yo, go on my, I got a GoFundMe in my bio. Click on it. It's all about giving me goat <laughs> eyes. Please send us goat eyes in the mail, everybody. Thank 30 you. 30% will go to the research of how to give me a goat eyes. 70% to the surgery. <laughs> There might be a follow-up uh, Kickstarter or possibly Fiverr <laughs> once I know how much the operation will There's cost. There's a chance um, that we will not have goats or eyes available in the coronavirus, so we may have to wait. <laughs> so please check on the back of your driver's license that you are a donor for goat eyes if <laughs> there is a severe shortage. Yo, goat eyes is so fucking funny. It's like, oh, Master Shifu, you learned your techniques from old goat eyes. <laughs> The legend of goat eyes. <laughs> you just can't see shit. Oh, man. All right, I got, oh, I got her funny. here, boys. If you want to follow us on Twitter, you follow us at, at Eddie Burback, at Gus Buckets. And are you at Nakey Jakey? I can't remember. Yeah, on Twitter, I actually got Boom, Nakey baby. Jakey. So we're, we're freaking fucking Now we're hell yeah. cooking with goat oil, boys. Uh, we, we, got a, <laughs> we got a question here from at flops underscore big that says, Hey, boys, just curious to see if you've played any Warzone yet. And if so, do you have a designated driver in it? And then they say, because when my friends drive, we, we always end up dying. Like when stupid-ass Dakota crashed the helicopter into a tree. How? Any thoughts Dakota. on that? Deco- well, first, Dakota's a just fucking like, Just idiot. like when all my classmates drunk drove on prom. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Same <laughs> dilemma. <laughs> uh, I don't know. In my group, it's kind of just whoever has the car. I feel like we're all simultaneously amazing and terrible at mm. driving. It's like, it's like I'm either doing fucking donuts around trees or I'm just straight T-boning yeah. every rock <laughs> I could find. Um, wait, was it Jakey? Was it you that it was me, you, and Zach playing? And you just fucking like took us off a cliff just for fun when we were in the back. <laughs> I have that, yeah, yeah, no, that I was, have it uh, captured. That was us three. Yeah, it was the it was the cargo truck where people have to chill in the back and like you get magnetized to it pretty well. But I remember Zach got scared and he just no, jumped yeah. out, and I ended up doing like a fucking gainer. In I have it captured because we were like nearing, I think, more final circle stuff, and Jakey. <laughs> Gus, Jakey just took us off a fucking ledge, so it's just me going like, Jakey, Jakey, come on, dude. And we're just like fucking we barreling we down fine. a cliff. Oh, I love that. It was, I mean, we were fine, but in the boys' defense, I definitely didn't know at that point how the game worked <laughs> and I was taking a chance. <laughs> Dude, you got to pick up the RPG right. every time. I always keep it on hold. Yes. It's so fucking OP, Dude. especially if you get a munitions box, which are like pretty common now. Like you got like seven RPG rounds in it, dude. You get one dude, hit on a RPG small vehicle is... and you kill a whole fucking team. It's so OP. No, dude, but here's the fucked up part is that like, okay, the game, it's like Diablo or Borderlands, or whatever, where it goes like gray, green, blue, orange, red, mm-hmm. whatever, you know, for the class stuff. You'll find the default gray RPG, the one you're talking about, amazing. Oh, yeah. Kills everything up close. Super sick. The purple, like, lock on one or whatever, I found it when I was the only one left in my squad. And I was like, oh, sweet. I have a big RPG. And I had a heartbeat sensor. And I knew that a whole squad was on top of a roof with a helicopter. And I snuck all the way up there. And then I, like, blasted the helicopter point blank with that RPG. And none of them died. And they just flew away. And what? I was like... What? Why is this a higher class than the default RPG? Because this was you. It pissed me off, dude. I was yeah. Also, curious. that's the auto lock one, so that should like theoretically be used to take down fucking helicopters, right? Yeah, it was it was purple or orange or some shit. So my like donkey brain was like, oh, okay, yeah, that's better. And then now I learned my lesson, and it's like, okay, you see the default RPG, decent strat, pick it up. Anything else, mm, fuck that. Moves. 
yeah but that pissed me off but dude warzone as a whole like me and gus were right before the podcast me and eddie were talking doom eternal and then me and gus were talking warzone and it's like i love both mm-hmm. of them like as far as battle mm-hmm. royales go warzone is like the least tilting most fun yeah it took the pressure off i don't feel constantly stressed playing the game like i do in other ones because you can go gulag and then you can also get revived Mm -hmm. but it but it's like that balance you'll still get tilted like for sure yeah like it's balanced though still where like you're right where it's less pressure but also it it still matters like when you get a kill you don't go like well fuck that guy's just coming right back no yeah it's still it took the pressures in like at the end of Fortnite, when people got so good and during apex when people got so good the frustration mm. of like being shot from behind and it's just over and done and there's nothing else and then you're like do I just drop again and everyone's amazing but the nice yeah. thing is like if you're yeah. like I feel like in Fortnite or Apex if you get the drop on somebody and you're like slightly a better player then you're good to go kind of you just will destroy people and the mm-hmm. nice thing is like if you're consistently trying to kind of a good well-balanced all-around player Warzone is where you're going to do the best because like if you die in kind of a bullshit way you can come back and be a better player again Oh, absolutely, dude. Mm-hmm. And it's, yeah, the whole money system and, like, being able to drop stuff and, like, take care of people and, like, uh, just, like, share funds with your friends. It's it's crazy how Warzone and Doom Eternal came out at basically the same time. And I loved Blackout, the last Call of Duty Battle Royale. And I loved Doom 2016. But Warzone and Doom Eternal are both such major mm-hmm. improvements Absolutely. on the other ones that I can never go back and play Blackout. Oh yeah, or there's Doom not a chance, especially Blackout. I don't think there's yeah. a chance I could ever choose yeah. that again. No, no. Like Doom 2016 is still a great game, but you get what I mean. Mm-hmm. That it's just like more so to say, like, holy shit, what a great time it is to be dude a animal crossing like, oh two God. and then like Fuck not two yeah. is in a sequel I'm, i haven't even got get your that. ass on our Fuck island evil dude, oh. dude jakey the every day you wait you're losing progress and falling behind the rest of us that's true also i want to yeah. stress what else is i new, on dude? purpose made people mad about animal crossing because i i made a sketch uh thing kind of not sketch but like i'm video making fun of people who don't time skip in animal crossing for mm-hmm. me personally people aren't gonna like it but i do it just where it's like if i have a thing Say I wake up in the morning and I'm playing Animal Crossing in the morning and I pay no- Tom Nook to pay off my house. That would mean I would have to wait like two days. Like, or, or if it, it's like I'm about to sell something to get the money. Either way, I'll just use a time skip so I don't have to wait two days for something. I'll like I'll mm-hmm. activate it so the next day it's happening. That's my own personal rule. I'm not skipping around like, dude, some people, I don't know if you guys have seen, have like skipped a fucking year already and that's have like insane. completely terraformed their island. And it's like, okay, maybe that's a little much. Yeah, that's that's a lot. Yeah, that's kind of. I'm surprised that they let you, you can, do that on the Switch because it just uses the internal. Yeah, clock, but you can right? turn off your clock being connected to the internet and change it to whenever. So, um, mm. you know, like mm. pre- I, I feels like every Nintendo system has made it like really easy to change the clock in games. I don't know why. No, yeah, a hundred percent. Because I remember this type of shit from like I never played any of them myself, but like when my brother was playing the first one on GameCube, it was like I remember this shit. Yeah, you just that. gotta do it so, sometimes. That's the thing for me. It's like it just makes it yeah, more enjoyable. I would be the same boat as you. Like that's just like a I'm here to have fun, and if there's something in this game that's preventing me from, it's like if you could skip all of the stupid animations in Red uh, Dead. Like I do that in mm-hmm. a heartbeat. Like what the fuck is fun about? Yeah, that? and it's like I think we even mentioned this briefly in the last one too. But it, I understand that the game is designed to be like take a break this is really really chill and, and low-key and stuff like that but you just but For there sure. are sometimes you're like okay i get it i am relaxing i'm playing by the rules let me fucking just give me a house get blathers well, here i need to get some shit out of my house like i don't want to have to go through the full animation every time i individually make every single fish bait like little things like that you know well, that's the thing that's great mm-hmm. is so actually i don't know if you guys saw that the creators of animal crossing with the new one added or like removed even more penalties for time skipping so it's like they Mm -hmm. they said they want to discourage it but they don't think it's cheating dude there are people that were tweeting at me like you are a cheater and it's like hey there's no winning it's it's like is this a competition animal crossing (laughs) if my friends aren't having a competition like gus isn't coming to my island and we're having a competition of whose place is better like there's no win. it's just it's a fun game to play and it's relaxing and yeah it's like I feel like that's been a staple of the game since it was made is like, oh, I'm not like, and we're quarantined, dude. People yeah. were like, I'm, I made a joke about how like you can't really do it. Like if you have to wait for everything for tomorrow, you can't do much. People are like you can fish, you can catch bugs. And it's like, yeah, I did that for fucking eight hours already, though. 
Yeah, and so exactly. Like, I could just earn yeah, more bells, but that. then I'm so rich that the rest of the game isn't a challenge. So if anything, I feel like I'm balancing the game out more than people that aren't skipping. That's all I'm saying. I fully agree with that. I fully do. Because it's just yes. like, like the grind shit is still fun, but it's like, especially the first few days, like they really kind of like fuck you over. Like that's when you want to just dive in and do the most shit. And it's like, okay, well, your one thing for the day was inviting blathers to the town. Now you have to wait. I guess you can spend 10 more hours fishing and going birding yes, and shit. And it's like, that. I'm not doing this dumb shit. Like you got me now. That's Entertain me, fucker. Yeah, exactly. And so, like, that's, that's I think, the big problem is is people were saying, like, oh, my God, Eddie, like, you, there's not nothing you can do. You can, like, you, like the grind I mentioned. And it, mm-hmm. I paid off Go when I didn't time skip for the first three days. I paid off the house every single day because I yeah, earned so much money from grinding that it was like, okay, well, I like spanning out the house over a long period of time. I don't want to just fish for fucking 20 hours because this is my third Animal Crossing game and I've probably fished in Animal Crossing for 300 hours total and yeah. it's the same mechanic every time and I still love it. But it's not going to be like, all right, I'm quarantined with nothing to do. Better fish for 10 hours. Yeah, it's it's too much. Yeah, fuck that. Love yeah. the anyway. game, though. The, uh, <laughs> yeah. It's so funny with that shit that like, even like you're talking about competition that like I can imagine even a game like Animal Crossing like so many people are just naturally like they can't help but be competitive is that like even in something like that or something like Dying Light where it's like okay this is totally just about you and like you doing your thing people will like race to get like the absolute most expensive outfit Uh or gun or Mm -hmm. item even if it's the fucking dumbest looking shit but just because they know that other people know how hard it is to get like I totally see people in Animal Crossing just like time skipping forever so that other people could see like look I got the enchanted legendary helmet Mm -hmm. in my house isn't that cool and it's like no one gets it Thing shit, is Animal dumbass. Crossing is a nice little world that belongs to you, and then maybe you can show a friend. And if your friend doesn't care, yeah, like you're not gonna prestige. Yeah, and if your friend does <laughs> care, Crossing. get a new friend because it's like <laughs> who gives a shit, dude. So I think people were jokingly mad, but then some people were seriously like, like you are not playing the game the way it's meant to be played. And to be told that a game that you've loved for like twelve years. And that you are 13 years and you've played three of in the way that you want to. People are like, no, that's not how you do it. It's like, I'm sorry. Well, I've been doing this since my childhood. So, yeah. Yeah. It's like it's like saying you can't use the fucking triangle button in Tony Hawk. Like, that's not how you play it. It's like, dude, this is about me having fun. I'm going to grind all I want. Mm, But I also did make a sketch making fun of them. So... (laughs) I did welcome it onto myself, yeah. but I did it on purpose. I thought it would be a funny discourse thing you, to do. You, you kind of picked up that gun and put it in your Go. own mouth, and you were surprised when damage was dealt. <laughs> guess the goat eyes are on my face this time. <laughs> Oof. So I guess who's got goat eyes now, wow. bitch? Well, it isn't goat eyes, Christensen. Son of a bitch! Harry Potter, is that you? <laughs> I haven't seen you in ages. I love that bit so much, dude. dude. Me and Jake were doing that forever. That we'd just be playing games and just be like, "God damn, you, so- Harry James <laughs> Potter, is that you?" And Harry's just like, "Oh my god, my friends from Hogwarts, so embarrassing." Ginny, don't look. I said, "Don't look." It's like look. one of those side characters, like Seamus, who was never ever cool, but thinks he was part of the group because he was in Harry's graduating class. <laughs> and he's like a little, he's a little dick to Harry the whole fucking like series yeah. too. He like says cheeky <laughs> shit. Isn't he the one that's like, I can't do his accent at all, but he's just like, "Dad's a muggle, mom's a witch." Bit of a nasty shock when yeah. he found yeah. out or some yeah, shit that kid. Like He that. always blows shit Little up in the movies, too. <laughs> yeah, he's always blowing up I love the idea spots, of smoking big <laughs> gas. His accent changing to what you were doing, just like, as I live and breathe, Harold James <laughs> Potter. <laughs> Southern <laughs> prospector. <laughs> well, <laughs> howdy! <laughs> <laughs> Fucking shout out Seamus. <laughs> All right, you got another um, pregunta, Gus? Damn right I do. Yeah, that was only one question. At Nicole Mariah, it's like Mariah but with E-H, so Mariah said, 
Uh, this is disgusting, but my sister never flushes the fucking toilet, but says it doesn't matter because me or my parents will do it for her when we have to. I'm sick of this, and I need her to stop. What? Your sister's a sociopath. Bro, what? Your sister doesn't care about yeah, everyone that. seeing her human she's shit like, all mm. the time. <laughs> yeah, she's like, I'll let the I'll let the peasants do it. I can't do she gets done laying a fat log. Hey, bitch, dad, get in here. <laughs> Oh, summon the flasher. I cannot <laughs> be bothered to push that's the metal. That's batshit crazy. I can't believe that. Also, it's like... Yeah, that's nuts. That means... She should go to jail and hell. <laughs> I'm confident her sister has never cleaned a toilet in her life then. Mm -hmm. You know... I bet she's never even wiped her own <laughs> butt either if she can't be bothered to flush. That's the easy part, Dude, dog. She's the number one culprit of the pee ring in the toilet bowl. Oh no, the <laughs> pee ring is brutal, dude. You have now entered the <laughs> pee ring, Mr. Potter. Uh, <laughs> that's the sequel to the like f the whack 'em sack 'em robots. Like the the having to build your own is like you need to build a person to go and like try to do a pee competition. <laughs> oh, I thought you were gonna say that's the next installment in the Harry Potter <laughs> the series. Ring. It's like Harry, Harry Potter, Harry and Potter, the Potter the in the pee ring. ring. <laughs> and it's the pee ring here, but in in England it's Harry Potter and the Piss circle. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Potter and the Wee Circle. <laughs> Uh, all right, we got uh, at Crustbag says, My girlfriend refers to diarrhea as ass vomit <laughs> because she thinks it sounds less vulgar. I think it's significantly more vulgar and gross sounding. Thoughts? Uh, yeah, it's fucking agreed. gross. Yeah. <laughs> ass vomit? Are you nuts? What are these people asking questions today? Dude, I don't know. Because, I mean, the thing is, so far, everyone has not been a boy. We haven't turned on one of the boys yet. So That's true. The boys Everybody's have a streak safe. going. We do have a couple peace streaks going here. Uh, <laughs> at Appa... 50 more key, key streaks. <laughs> get a fucking tactical, tactical pee a ball. tactical duke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, they do. <laughs> It's like World at War, there's piss dogs that come out. <laughs> you're just like, your friend's like, all right, man, I gotta go to the bathroom. It's like, all right, cool. From the bathroom, you hear like the nuke warning <laughs> sound. It's like, the, it's like what the fuck Jake, is going stop. On there? <laughs> oh, 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 my. Is that you all from right. the bathroom? <laughs> uh, at Z, Z Judo says, question for Jakey. Do you ever miss or feel nostalgia for the old rap review format, or are you just past that era entirely? Um, I, I'm moving past it, but not in a negative way. More so just in like a... I got so many fucking tracks in the oven of like song songs that I think are... I'm pretty confident are like way better than any mm -hmm. of that stuff. But I definitely... I used to think of it as like, oh man, why was that like my first impression of like shit i really care about being like another dumb youtube rapper but a lot of the times when i go back and i listen to him i'm like man they were still sick though yeah i was like <laughs> like i'm finally at a point where i'm not just like some humble bashful like oh everything i make sucks it's like i can look back at some of the beats especially and be like man i was yeah. sick mm. like i was definitely not just another like cringy gamer rapper did whatever. you make one for doom 2016? especially with the shit i'm making now did you make one Say for what? doom 2016 yeah, that's, that's like what the best I thought. One. I, that I, beat, remember, I, I remember. Yeah, no, I still, I still revisit that beat to try to like use it for something else because it's mm -hmm. so good. Like, I'm is, sick. I'm is sick there with any it. <laughs> like old formats or like just specific kinds of videos that you guys miss the most? That it's like you, you probably won't do anymore, but like you really do miss making them. I don't think it's um, that I won't. We won't do anymore, but I do really miss making the Gus Netty videos. The the yeah. ones. They're just so fun. <clears throat> They're so stupid and fun. Like, I'm, I'm so happy, too, that, like, especially, like, Gus and Eddie go to Canada. Like, all the shit between you and me in the hotel room, like, has gotten so many, there's so much distance out of it. You know, I we had yeah. the, even, it, like, the sound bite blown up on TikTok for a while of you trying Dude, to, like, don't so kill weird. yourself. Very yeah. weird, yeah. Yeah, that's it's, super Every weird. time I see it, like, around, I'm just like, oh, they don't even know who we are. <laughs> They're just using yeah. the audio from it. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, I don't know that I, I miss that format a lot and you guys know we're, we're gonna bring it back at some point But I love to even with the Canada video. We didn't like go and do things for it We just like made do with doing bits in the room And mm -hmm. I think honestly, maybe we should just do that even in the apartment during boys trips more of just like really dumb bits We shoot here 
Mm-hmm. But also, yeah, I, I, like I want to make the most of our vacations usually, and I usually don't want to film too. But who that's knows? the thing is, it's like, yeah, it's like usually when Sven comes is when we can do the most video shit because he's coming and and staying way too long, you know. But I feel the mm. same way if it's like the boys are here, like, like let's go, let's hang out, let's play some video games, you know, let's go get ramen stuff like that. But. Yeah. Oh, what about you, Jakey, for format stuff that you might not re- revisit but you love? Um. Hmm. I, it's kind of like the rap review stuff that I can look back at it and be like, man, I was way too hard on myself for so much of the stuff. Like I can see it from an outside perspective and be like, man, it's flawed. But like, all right, I'm seeing what other people saw. Like I worked hard. That's sick. That mm-hmm. looks good. But like, I think I have so much more fun with the formats that I do now, like with the green screen and like more like physical comedy and like the topics that I'm covering that it it's not... It's, I don't think I've ever had a feeling where I was like, oh, I want to go back and make another like Halo type like where it's just right. voiceover. Because I think the <clears throat> ever since I made the Red Dead video where it was like all the ingredients of everything I'd ever done came into one thing, it was like, oh, I don't, I don't think I'm ever going to mm. go back mm-hmm. from like... You know, obviously in the situation I'm in now where I don't even have the green screen or the ball or like my lights or my camera, I just have my phone, my laptop and this like podcast microphone that my friends let me borrow. Um, I'm still scheming on making stuff that like now just forced by limitations, I would maybe do voiceover shit like Mm -hmm. I used to. But typically I'm not sitting around being like, oh man, I wish people were still into that or I could go back to that. It's like seems to be kind of a win-win where it's like people's favorite shit is the stuff I've made more recently and that's the stuff I like making the most so it's like I feel pretty blessed with that that's yeah, pretty totally. sick yeah for sure um, that, uh, did we both pause because we talked at the same time oh yeah do you have something uh, else I was I, just going to do, do my answer I was going to say I, I've even with your stuff Jakey yeah it's like I like shit that you like even games that should bang from before but I'm like would I rather a new games that you bang instead of just a regular new Jakey video? And the answer is just like, no, where it's like almost you wish there was like a separate smaller YouTuber Jakey making those videos, but doesn't interact with the new ones. Mm-hmm. Right. But even, even something like that, it's like if I were to do another topic like that of like, Oh, games that should bang these two different games. Like I could still do that topic in my yeah. current format. And I think it would be better than it Agreed. used to yeah, be. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. But But yeah, um, I do, with that kind of stuff, it is why Jaquan the Jequel, like, yeah, it spawned from the Disney video of kind of being a joke, but I had been meaning to make a second channel for a while where I can just upload Mm -hmm. whatever. And like, ever since I made the little edit for the Star Wars Fallen Order, like Game of the Year montage that was super fun, I haven't uploaded anything, but like, I definitely, like that second channel exists for like, for example, if I did want to do just a quick voiceover, like, oh, this is thoughts that I had on Doom, or this is blah, 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 like, I definitely plan on doing more of that shit, where it's just like, yeah, I don't really care, but here's that thing that's, like, maybe more in the vein of, like, those quick mm-hmm. hits that I would make back in the day. Yeah, totally. I don't know. I'm just rambling, but you get what I'm saying. Fucking go, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think uh, for my answer for that is I, I miss doing specific characters a lot. I think largely, again, too, I agree. I'm, I'm making some of my favorite stuff now, especially in the last year. Like some of my highlights have been like the God shit and God's country and like Imbiamba Jones and the mom shit with Sven are really fun. And it's just like I'm glad that I don't feel like I'm missing out on a kind of video. I just miss specific characters, you know, where it's mm. like, I'm like, I would fucking love to do another Mitchell Robbins one. Like that would be so cool, but I'm still happy with how I ended it. And I didn't want to be like pathetic and do another one. And, and I would love to do another working man, but I already did all 10 of them. So I can't, but you know, all mm. of those, but other than that, that's what I got. I um, think, I, Oh, go ahead. okay. Um, oh, well, hmm. guess Gus has some, I don't oh. know, goat, ears Ooh, um, no i was gonna say Ooh, he's got goat teeth too he's always gnawing <laughs> no, on my pillows no. i haven't mentioned this really around other than i think a conversation i had with you jakey but i think and i love making the bad movie videos but i'm just not super interested in doing any of those anytime soon um it just seems to be done Word. a lot right now, and it was a nice thing to do again because I had done it, you know, like three years ago, and it was nice to kind of flex and come right. back now that I'm, like, super confident in what I make to be like, oh, I can make this way more of a thing uh, than it used to be, and I did, and it's just like it, right now there's not any movie that I would want to do, 
So um, probably those mm. for now. I love doing them, but I don't know. I just don't want to get to the point where I'm like, I'm getting desperate with movie stuff and like making fun of like just yeah. finding something that's kind of because even as my as an enthusiast of bad movies, personally for my taste, there's only like eight of them that I really think are like good bad movies to watch. Right. Mm-hmm. Then people are going to get mm-hmm. burned out. Yeah. But no, I, I like what you said about like. Not that any of us are like fucking gods or masters. We all have goat brain. But that 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 is, I do relate to that a lot where it's like maybe going back to it would be fun in the sense of like, ooh, I can use the things I learned and make what I used to make better. Like I definitely vibe with that. And even though I'm like going on different topics that are very non-gaming related, I do it have the confidence and like the excitement that like, okay, if there's a gaming thing I really care about, I know I could go back to it and it would be like a, Oh, I'm not just a dumbass anymore. Like I can yeah, crush this sure. shit. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Which is sick. That's, that's a super cool I, thing. I, on the flip side of that, I, I find like sometimes missing going back to how I did things before, like how I'm, how I'm creating videos now, like I think is the most streamlined and efficient that it's ever been. But like, I kind of like having the, the yeah. obstacles and limitations sometimes of like, I, like I love working within parameters where it says, oh, okay, this is the only person I have available to film. It's my little sister. Okay. I'll make this work. Or like, I need to bring in a work light. That's great. Like I need to, I, I there's no microphone. The, yeah. Monsters That's Inc. video. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Dude, limitations are like the, I don't, I mean, a billion people have said it. Like, I'm sure you could quote everyone from Goat Eyes to Gandhi, but I thought of it the other day when I was in the shower because I don't have all my shit. I remembered that like, and it's so true, like limitations are like the lifeblood of creativity. Like any time that you're like forced to just work with what you got, that's when people make the best shit. Mm -hmm. Like all the best PS2 games are like towards the end of the generation when it's like, okay, this console is fucking tapped out. Like the PS3 has been out forever. We barely squeezed anything more out of it, but I guess we got to make the last of us work on mm-hmm. it. And then they do. Mm-hmm. And it's like, what the yeah, fuck? Yeah, that's insane, dude. I that, don't know. But, but totally wild, limitations can be like super the good. Way it looks yeah. Was, you know, a choice obviously to make it uh, a distinct art style, but also to run on the switch. Oh Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. It's Nintendo is the fucking king of that. They're like they're, oh my god. It's I talk about that forever. But limitations are like honestly. So I honestly sick. like I used to record videos on my phone, and that's all mm-hmm. I have now. So I'm like, all right, well that's not an excuse because I have a better phone now than mm-hmm. I did then. Like, oh, that's what absolutely. I do is I'll edit my videos with my eyes closed. So if they're I, I guess if they're like really good, it's just <laughs> how I just kind of manage and listen my way through it. Are your nipples um, open though? Um. No, not yeah. very. Yeah, can we get some okay, eyes well, on the Okay, well, if you're nips? peeking, it still counts. Like, you're no. pretty much not compromised. Tony, t- Tony, can you give us a slow-mo? <laughs> <movie game? laughs> not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Brought to you by ESPN. The easiest way to get this video taken down is a slow-mo, <laughs> slow-mo nipple, nipple cam. cam. <laughs> Yo, f- from the creators of Mommy Makeup Day, come <laughs> slow-mo <laughs> nipple by cam. By Tony, like it's a perfume. <laughs> I really... By Tony. Yeah, Tony wants you to know that he made this I really shit. think the phrase mommy makeout day is still one of the funniest things I've ever heard. It's uh-huh. such oh, I think it's about it so every day. Mommy makeout day. Every day, day dude. It's a, oh, it's so fun <laughs> to say. Oh my god, I love like, that shit. It's so not a much. middle-aged woman or something. Like it has to be a mom. We have to make out, and today is the national holiday for it. Yeah. That's yeah, like I like the prank invasion, Chris. Oh my god. It's the implication so that everyone funny. knows who like they're like yeah. it's the, you know as we all know it's exactly. mommy makeup day. It's like, all right. Oh, look at your calendar, you know. Um, dude, that and fucking no clothes family day. That what? one. Wait, wait, what? Like, what? Why is that? That one. That's another prank in Vegas. No, no, it's right. family, family it, day. Where he says we're back. He's like we're back on the boardwalk for no clothes family day. And it's like, is this what you refer to? beach day because they have bathing suits on but in chris's mind he's like oh no clothes they only wear underwear uh family day because they're all at the beach about to swim okay no clothes family day uh, that one doesn't even like oh, sound I good that yeah that is like ethan like h3 has made a lot of like really i told yeah i told him on the podcast the b44 the boy band video in new york is one of my favorite videos on youtube ever like you you can't even it's it's like a a great like musician or whatever that like 
like that they have like Drake that it's like you criticize him but you can't even list all of the hits that he has on like two five hands whatever like you mm-hmm. forget about him like Ethan has so many good videos but I think because it was the first one I saw dude the mommy makeout day prank invasion Chris stuff is like I will rewatch yeah. that till so I die that all shit the bits is with the so bra- like getting pussy with bracelets is one of yeah. the funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fucking but he's like dancing on the desk oh, and man. shit like oh my god I, they had a main channel up so a couple days ago too they broke the yeah. streak coroni yeah. virus video mm-hmm. oh coroni yeah he, mm-hmm. ethan actually touched on one that uh, somebody that i'm gonna do for my next one it might be out by now but it's pastor kenneth copeland i dissected a full two-hour sermon from him uh like oh Jesus. my god it's it's like it's a gem of a of a video to react to and i had to trim it down to like seven minutes to react to but just absolute fucking insanity, but and luckily Ethan didn't go into it too deep because everyone was kind of just seeing the surface level thing of like, you know, the pastor trying to pray the the virus away through the TV by holding his hand up and shit like that. Right. But I got a lot of insanity in there. I just I want to see H three uploaded more. I think they put a lot of pressure on themselves now for the main mm-hmm. channel. No, t- totally, dude. And I I think that that's that's something that like we all experience. I've realized that recently, like around the time I moved that it. it it was like one thing with YouTube of being so selective and starting to scrap more videos that like somewhat positive that I just have a better eye for what I think is worth mm-hmm. uploading. But I realized it was slowly extending to like Instagram and Twitter that I would like get in my own head before sending tweets. Whereas before I would just say the dumbest shit without mm-hmm. thinking. And so like <laughs> the, almost immediately after realizing that I tried to break it recently by just tweeting more again and mm-hmm. not caring. And it's obviously it's been fine. Like I don't give a shit. And so it's like, that's something that is very fucking real. And yeah, I feel really bad for them. Cause I, I, I know that it's rough, but you definitely have to like just nip it in the bud and not be so hard. One thing I'll say, and we can, I mean, we can cut it if we don't, I don't think I've asked this specific question. Um, sorry, Gus, this one doesn't apply to you because you are productive. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Is Jakey, how do you, because we both get kind of, you know, sometimes people can be pretty demanding about upload schedule stuff with us. How does that make you feel? Because I don't know. I just recently, it's like I only make stuff and upload when I think it's worth it. And I think it's good now because we can. Um, And I don't know. I just feel like there's this culture of like you have to be capitalizing and uploading as much as possible. And like some people will get actually mad that we're not uploading as much as possible. And it's just like. If I was uploading more, the videos would be worse. Like, what don't you understand about this? Like, I'm selective because I care so much about this one upload. Right. No, I I don't know. It's it's like it's a loaded. But ass it's a bag compliment that's too, the core right? Of like, like, yeah, no, totally. That I I look at it like from. I've realized a lot of the time if anyone is criticizing you, like in a situation where your content is of a certain level of quality which i like hope my shit is and i think like the like i don't know stats of the last year or so of the stuff i have released like i can vouch that like oh yeah i've proven that like it takes a minute but it's hopefully worth it Mm -hmm. when it drops i think that a lot of the people that do end up criticizing you and being like oh give us more content like you lazy piece of shit where is it i think a lot of that especially if it's coming from like other smaller YouTubers, it's partly projecting because they're part of the culture where they feel like they have to upload all the time. So if they see someone that isn't doing that and it's actually working out for them, they're probably kind of pissed and they're like, wait, what the fuck? Like, why does he get away with, you know, not making shit for a while and doing that? But like all the rest of us are grinding and it's like, dude, you don't, you don't have to do that. that. I think, well, also though, we did all grind to a point where we didn't have to do that anymore. You know what I mean? Like you kind of do. No, that's, it's, it's a, it's a luxury for for sure. It's a privilege. I will say what what bothered me kind of, and Gus, don't worry. I got a question for you right after. I didn't want to just fucking box (laughs) you out of the conversation. But, um, uh, I remember it was like when I was talking about it kind of recently, uh, somebody on Twitter was like, yeah, but you could be so much bigger and you could be making more money. And I was like, I'm happy though. So what does it matter? And it's like, why are you concerned? I, I thought it was like weird. It's like, you're concerned that I'm not doing better when like, again, it's a compliment of like, they like my stuff. They want better, like a well being exactly. for me. It's all coming from a Yeah. A but it's like, place, I'm content. Right? It's like, I make videos when I want to, because it's not when I want to, but when I think it's a really good one and I'm more the, the pride of looking back at a catalog and liking it is way more for me than a subscriber number, like a million percent. 
And so it's just, I don't know. It makes yeah. me feel weird where it's like, again, comes from a good place and I don't mean to sound ungrateful, but it does make me feel weird where people are like, you could be happier. So be happier and work harder. And it's like, I'm happy. No, I'm content. It, like I'm good. Yeah, no. And it's just because Gus, we were talking about how Ethan that, you know, you wish he wouldn't be so hard on himself. Like speaking of him, when you guys were on the podcast, which it's like full disclosure, like I've, I've never actually met Ethan. I've like messaged him, but he seems like a total angel. I've been a huge fan for a while. Like obviously he's killing it. Big fan. But when he did catch a little bit of flack, when he was kind of like, I mean, he was mostly doing it as a bit, but being like, Oh, Eddie, we need to get you like back on the horse. Like you need to, you need to do this shit. Like basically the same. Yeah. Type people of shit were unfair people were to Ethan though, because he instantly after even was like, no, but I really like your videos and like do whatever you want. And like, I feel like people just shut no, that e- exactly. out completely where they, yeah, exactly. It, that's what I was going to say is it's like he it's coming from a good place, but he's also, I'm sure, saying it because he's trying to give you advice because he thinks like maybe partially that like, oh, that would like be in your favor. And oh, well, you yeah, could, you know, be Ethan, more successful. And he wishes Ethan that and Ela you, pretty right? much directly said that they were kind of worried because they got more selective. And I think they thought that was what was happening with me. And then with talking to them about it a little bit, uh, I think they both realized it wasn't. And it, <laughs> Ethan, dude, I, I got into commentary because of Ethan. And he was saying such nice things about my videos and being like well-researched and edited. And then like that's all I was hearing is somebody that was like pretty much my hero telling me that they really liked my stuff. And then, I don't know, the comments were like so negative about it where it's like I really in the moment to me did not feel like anything that was weird at all. Um Right. No, it's, it was, it's totally a thing of like, oh, this is a guy that like likes my shit and respects my shit and he just wants yeah. more of it. And he's just like busting. And your then after I explained myself, like you said, yeah, he even after, like, totally. but right. my, my opposite question but for of course, Gus then, if it's cool, if I, sorry, uh, just throw this in then. Cause Gus, you work, I think way more productive than us. Like there's a different kind of, there's a small like shift of like, um, of maybe like satisfaction out of productivity. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we're kind of serial procrastinators, how, like just as a friend, are you like, how's the, the quarantine stuff affecting that? Cause I know you usually yeah. love to be like on the grind, hitting it all the time, not on yeah, the grind, yeah. like dumb Kevin Hart shit, but actually just like being on <laughs> top of it. <laughs> uh huh. No, I appreciate you asking. It's, uh, it's been good up here. Honestly. Um, it's, uh, we have been more productive than ever. Ironically. Um, I, I, I have, I can't tell if it's a shortcoming or, or if it's an asset, especially in the last two years. Like my work ethic has been so much improved as to where it was like previously in life. Like I just, I limped through school. I, I almost failed college. And this is like the first time I feel like I'm really applying myself. And, and, uh, but I think I'm just, I'm way too hard on myself in terms of like having to get shit done. Like I'll have a day, like even today, for example, you know, I got up at like 11 and I felt like a piece of shit and, and I already filmed a video and like, I'm, I'm editing after this and I've typed up a script before this and then we're doing a podcast and I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not going to feel satisfied when I go to bed. Like I just felt like, and it sounds so douchey and stupid to say, but I just, I, especially being like like locked up up here i just feel like i got to be i got to be doing something like what an opportunity you know like i need to i need to write something i could film so many things like i could do a podcast and stuff like that so i i wish i could find a better balance with that but on the flip side it's, like yes, it's opened enough. up so many opportunities for myself just being able to like because of my productivity and because i i keep going and like working with other people and stuff like it's 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 stuff that I do want to do, but I just do too much of it, and I, I yeah, ultimately yeah. am left unsatisfied sometimes. But and also, yeah, you so you get more time to just kind of chill and get used to that a little bit. I think yeah. it's, it's interesting because I know obviously you um, like get so much satisfaction also out of the final product, but I, I don't know how it like is for you, Jake. You're even Gus for you with working on stuff, but for me, it's like when I'm making a video, when I'm filming and editing. I can't feel satisfied from being productive that day until Mm -hmm. the thing is completely done. And so I don't get any satisfaction from being super productive or doing as much as I could that day. It's just when I finish the thing and it's out, I can go like, "Ah," and that's pretty much it. And it's it's interesting to me that Mm -hmm. it's the opposite for you or not the opposite, but like you have the aspects of like, if you did, go and film that day, you're like, oh, well, a productive ass day got shit done. And I just mm-hmm. can't feel that. I don't know why. Yeah, I need to have the end product yeah. though, a lot of the times too. And I, yeah, I, no, no. 
when I've, I'm really like, I'll have a day where I'll do 10 different things, but because I didn't shoot a video that day, I'll be like, wow, nothing to look for here. And it's like, I sent 10 emails. I had two phone calls. Like I wrote a script, like, but I'm like, nope, no video I, to watch. It's like, what? I, think, I don't even upload every day. I upload every seven to eight days now. What the fuck is wrong with me? I think, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, you're, you're definitely like, oh, I was just going to say, I think that like when it comes to this shit. I personally feel like Gus, you're too far on one side and I'm too far on the other where I'm like, I'm like almost crippling mm. with like how selective I am with work and how like, I guess inconsistent my work ethic can be. But I also have more time to like actually chill and like really think about like, okay, what's making me happy, blah, blah, blah. And I feel like most of the time I can like sleep at night without feeling like, oh, I needed mm -hmm. to do this thing. But like, I need the better work ethic and consistency. But you're, I think, a little too far on the side of like, you're just too mm. hard on yourself. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I think, I think in the opposite like, end. I'm not trying to tell you how to live your life, but just for like sake of my friend, it's like, dude, you like you already do so much and everyone like loves it. And like you're pumping stuff out that I don't, I don't hearing that. Like you feel like you need to be doing more. It's like, no, nah, you're going to like, you keep that up. I think you would burn out and we'd like, no one wants that. Like you're, you need to be nicer. To yeah, yourself, definitely. Man. And I, I, well, I appreciate that. And, and I think too, especially like I'm, I'm when I do my work stuff too, I mean, you guys know this, I've dialed so much back publicly, you know, like obviously we're going to be doing bonus quarantine episodes, but otherwise it's like once a week you get a podcast and once a week there's a sketch and maybe mm -hmm. I do a collab the rest of the week and stuff. But I just, the way that I view the situation right now is just for the time in my life, like I want to try to capitalize on stuff when I'm young and I recognize the kind of momentum of like the channel and what I'm doing here. And when doors open up, I think perhaps more than I ought to, I put so much importance in like, oh shit, here comes Comedy Central. If I if I nail it this year with them, maybe there'll be somebody I can work with for 30 years, you know? So when a lot of stuff has happened just in a short amount of time, I feel like I really need to make inroads with people. It's like, oh fuck, like gotta do the Comedy Central stuff, really gotta do, dive into the podcast, let's do this album thing with like Lil Aaron. And then I get so spread out where ultimately these first impressions that I put so much importance in, I'm ironically kind of sabotage, sabotaging because I'm taking on so much and I just can't perform in every area, you know? Mm. But mm -hmm. I think, I yeah, you start spreading yourself too thin over too much stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's like, I, I totally get the, I think we can all relate to that of like, you realize you've been given this opportunity and you're young and you're in like the situation where you can choose your own schedule and be as like being your own boss and be as own productive or be as productive as you possibly can be. And so there's like, there's a good amount of pressure that's like pushing you and you have a work ethic and you're like, okay, I'm like, I'm not just sitting around, I'm getting stuff mm -hmm. done. But I think because you are your own boss and no one is there to force you to stop working and go home and sleep because you sleep mm -hmm. where you work, that's where it gets dangerous of like, oh, dude, that's why so many YouTubers yeah, get I, burnt out because they feel like they can never I think that's the opposite. Yeah, even, yeah, Gus, with our work ethic of like you being kind of too hard on yourself and not... I'm not easy on myself, like if we're talking about like mentally about things, but I think when it comes to like procrastination stuff, I, and it's a flaw though, on the other end of the spectrum, like I can, if I feel like I can't film that day, like if I feel like if I film, it's going to be forced, I will feel guilty for maybe like 10 minutes and be like, God damn it. Like what's wrong with me? Why can't I feel like filming? And then I will just push it away from like any conscious part of my brain and just mm -hmm. like play video games that day. And so it's like, I think it's the opposite kind of toxic thing where like you'll beat yourself up too much and then I don't think about it as no, as much as I should. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, so we no, need to just a good have a kid and he'll Dude. be together and he'll go <laughs> the, in the middle ground. That's good. We, the, the, the kid will be the ultimate silver. <laughs> <guy. laughs> The one that leads what we the need team. To do. He has he has the energies of both. <laughs> it'll sides. be like it'll be like Voltron. We need to stack into like four different YouTubers and make a really productive but also mentally healthy one. Can we? Yeah, let's start a YouTuber collective house. Let's all move into a Twitch. Let's all a Twitch rent house. a room and just lay in a stack. Let's go be a YouTuber. Ooh. Let's next Ooh. year for Halloween. Let's let's be kid in a trench coat on top of each other's uh, shoulders, dressed as regular height Markiplier, please. Okay. <laughs> I want. Oh, I was gonna say I want to be Markiplier. Why is he the go-to like meme to YouTuber? Like more so than I think because it's like lovingly like memed. Yeah. Like when I when I see kind of yeah. like goofy ninja memes, I think that that w goes way more towards like the cringe aspect of it. Uh, 
Yeah, that people are like, right. yeah, like Ray William Johnson. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But a Mark <laughs> meme, you're right. It's like it's wholesome. Like I don't think anyone's like fuck Mark. Like Mark's just a nice semen guy, and and he's just he's a good ass semen guy. <laughs> think of the memes. Like none of it is anything directly that Mark did. Like E is nothing really to do with Mark <laughs> other than his face, and. Um, also, even like the bite of, is it the bite of 87? It's like, it seems like out of love, they just turned a Markiplier moment into a meme rather than like the cringe, <laughs> yeah. the, the ninja uh, New Year's Eve thing is not yeah. like a, we lovingly just picked this ninja moment to be a meme. Uh-huh. Absolutely. So can somebody... No, that was like ninja Sorry. was asking for it. It's like, if you're going to, I mean, the world is way too harsh on people and we should all be a little bit nicer, like definitely. But with Ninja doing that and like selling out a little bit, it's like, dude, you are inviting yeah. criticism. Like if you're really going to floss in front of this crowd, <laughs> the, like you. I you, think they you asked him to. I think he talked about like, it and they like asked him to do it, which uh -huh. I just feel really bad. Well, Can that, somebody the thing make is a like, version of yeah. really quick, sorry, just the E meme, but with Ninja's face and just have it be N? I really, really <laughs> want to see that. <laughs> I don't think he wants wants to see that <laughs> that letter <coughs> anyway <coughs> corona getting to me um yeah i was gonna say um it feels like uh, especially with ninja i think he opens himself up to more criticism not just by uh, by doing some of those cringy things that might definitely be labeled as kind of sellouty too but he himself has been so outwardly critical in such weird miscalculated areas where I think it just makes you like look like you got your pants around your ankles like if he's like that whole like if you is, is the second you say that like you're okay with it like you're never getting better at a game I don't know what his fucking quote it's, is you know the the quote was that when you say it's just a game you've already yeah. lost and it's like uh, and he's going hard on something or he's like he's, he's said, blaming uh, people for stream sniping you know yeah and he said that uh, being a Fortnite player is way more difficult than being an NFL kicker uh, <laughs> yeah where it's like that it's like I don't care what your truth is a lot of the time you say that and everyone goes like fuck that guy a little bit like shut yeah. up you know so don't open it's yourself like we want up the to best shit, for right? you it's like if you're gonna complain about no, stuff like do it in a way that doesn't make you look really stupid like I've put my foot in my mouth with stuff before you know but you, you just oh, can't yeah. go all the way <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh yeah, oh, yeah. The Gus, yeah. <laughs> oh, you really like sucking on your toes huh <laughs> No, dude, with the, the fucking, his, I was talking about this with Jake the other day, which I, I feel like I mention him all the time, but he's, he's one of my best friends from South Dakota. He's like, he's really good at Counter-Strike and his, I play games with him and his little brother, Michael, we call him Mikey, and he is like insane at Warzone. Like he's so good. And we were talking about what Ninja said and we all agreed, like you get what he's trying yeah, to say. Yeah, and you usually that, agree. Like, if you really want mm -hmm. to, right. That it's like, if you want to be successful quote unquote and good at something especially being a streamer or like an esports player it's like yeah you have to like you put your head down you practice you get the work done it's not just like oh it's this silly thing it's like oh it's a passion and like anything you got to work really hard at it but it's how he said it and how he said it to like millions of little kids that's like ninja yeah. yo, yo. <laughs> like no no, no. <laughs> God. Ninja. I really oh. think uh, yeah. I, I have to say of the last year, the yo yo shopping cart and the no no shopping cart memes are my favorite memes of the last like twelve months. Yeah, no that that one's like <laughs> it feels like I saw it yesterday. Like it still feels Rotten Tomatoes, hundred percent certified <laughs> fresh. Like I love that I still, fucking meme oh. so much. It's like changed how I interact <laughs> with the world. Also, um. <laughs> I, I realized because uh, we're very late into the podcast that we got to open one package of Jakey State with us. Mail! Ma ma <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't even say mail. I said me. I went me. We got one package today that I'm opening now. What is it? Um, I don't know yet. I said I'm opening tell it. Tell me, tell me, tell me. It's a hey. it's a lie, buddy. <laughs> this is one of those foot in the mouth moments. Uh-oh. This is top five Gus Johnson foot in mouth moments. <laughs> Number, Number one, five, when he sucked his right big toe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Very this is some fancy lettuce. ass packaging. It's not super fancy, but um, okay, it's uh some uh looks like Intimates uh a di adult diaper overnight underwear. 
So thanks, oh. guys, for this. Yeah, okay. We can only yeah. open one package per podcast because we have so little and we're quarantined. <laughs> That's thanks good, though. the adult diaper. Now, we, if we run out of toilet paper, we Yo. can just poop our little butts off. I don't know what you're saying about yeah, we because I got this you. bad boy all to myself down here. Listen, all you have to do is say, pull- You guys going to pull some conjoined twin <laughs> shit? <laughs> You each get a leg. <laughs> There's a whole... Half the poop goes on the floor. Half of it goes... Um, there's a whole pamphlet of, yes. the, of which products are the right absorbency and fit for you. Um, it says Damn. regular. I didn't read the inches yet, so I just thought it said for one of them, like, regular eight, long nine. <laughs> it's like, what is that oh. measurement? I'm trying to... Th- to, to think now of how two people could share a Depends diaper at the same time. And I think if you had, if you were able to put your legs together and shimmy both legs through one of the leg holes so that your butt was going into the crotch part, the other person could shimmy their two legs into the other leg hole and you would have a shared butt crotch area that you could poop and or pee into. <laughs> and then if you need to walk, you just do cartwheels to get it. It's like dripping down the leg as you do the cartwheels. Fart wheels. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that's it for me. Sure. <laughs> Dude, speaking of packages, though, I wanted to, oh, and shit. I assume it's fine on the podcast because you were publicly tweeting about it, but like, Oh, are you making a dick joke? You fucking bitch. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. You want me to set the, the story for people that stole, don't know? Someone stole, please. Okay. Yeah. yeah, someone so, stole shit. Um, uh, Gus needed to come down and get some stuff that I was going to put outside the door um, that he was going to grab, you know, because of coronavirus. And so it was like Gus messaged me and asked me also about packages that never arrived on Monday. And so, like, I was going to put some stuff out for him, and I opened the door just to check – and there were new packet or there was a new package, but it wasn't like one of the Monday ones. And I was like, oh well, I'm just about to put this stuff outside, um, and Gus is gonna come down and grab it. So I'll just like leave it there. I'm not gonna bring it inside. Uh, and so I went to grab the stuff, and when I came back, the box was gone. So I was like, oh, Gus is coming down in rounds to grab stuff. So I left my stuff out, and Gus grabbed it. Um, and then the next day, I opened the door for a fresh order that I got, and there were two Amazon boxes sitting there cut cleanly cut open and empty left at our door and i was like well there's no way gus would like open his box and they had gus's name on him so it's like there's no way he'd open them and bring them down and leave me with the recycling that doesn't make sense Mm -hmm. and so like i took a picture of it and i I asked gus like i was like are these your packages from monday did you grab these and then gus i was just like what the fuck no that's what i said so uh somebody stole packages from in front of our door and then returned the boxes for me to recycle. How fucked what is the, that? That's, so I'm, not, fuck, dude? I'm not even My buying question. Dumbo shit. Like, that's important shit I needed. I was like, well, boy, I could really use a baking exactly, sheet and some, like, cutlery and stuff like that as, as we're cooking things up here. Yeah. Wait, so the boxes they stole, they were Amazon Fresh? No, they, they were, were regular. regular I opened the door for a fresh order, and they were regular Amazon boxes. Right. Okay. Because I was going to say, if they were fresh orders, that would be, like... Oh, I don't think they're just stealing it because it's Gus Johnson or Eddie Burback. It's probably some shitty person that's like, oh, that's going to be food. I'm desperate. I want food, which mm-hmm. is still fucked. But it's like I could see any piece of shit doing that. But because it was just a regular package, that's like, do you I guess my question is, yeah, do you think people in your building did it or even God forbid people that don't live in your building that came in and did it. Do you think they did it because it's no, your I don't let me head you off because people... I changed my names on all my packages. Yeah. Too, so yeah. it's not so Gus it, it, Johnson up there. It's a fully different name. Right. Yeah. So it doesn't say Gus. Right. Either. It was outside the door. Yeah. Too, right. It wasn't like it was outside room. the door and didn't have his name on it. So I think somebody was just making the rounds. Right. So it's, I don't dude, I don't yeah. know. Like who the fuck could have done it? It would do you, would it be somebody like living on our floor or somebody uh, going that, into the building? That's the thing is it's so specific and it was such a small window of time between when you passed through and they weren't there and then when you came back and they were there. And it's like, why would you do that? Like, well, fuck you. That's my fourth package that's gone missing since the quarantine. I've had shit go missing up here, both in fresh and in regular orders too. Yeah, well, the thing is though, it was there was maybe f- like five minutes in between you 
like me seeing the package and you coming mm-hmm. downstairs. And then there was a day gap. And then it was like, I walked outside for a reason and then came back and the packages were there. So like yeah. they didn't get stolen. They got stolen over a day period, but mm-hmm. like the times they were disappeared and placed were in a period of like five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Very small. So yeah, my hunch would be that it was like, Hopefully not someone living in the building, even though it probably is. But yeah, like you said, someone just doing the rounds, being a but piece why would of they shit, leave just the, like, like if you stole a package, you would think, oh, okay, they can report right. it to Amazon as not being delivered. Yeah. But why would you return the evidence of like, oh, I stole this and I placed it back where you live? Yeah. And then it's like, exactly. Like I could have gone on thinking this was Amazon's problem, but now I know some idiot definitely stole it, you know? Yeah. And there's another problem. Right, like, oh, I never got yeah, my Yeah, there's another slight possibility. Shit. So, like, when I got the fresh order, I, I opened the door, and there was, a, like, a delivery guy walking away. There's a slight possibility that somebody stole it in the mailroom, and then the delivery guy saw the address and still brought the boxes up, but that's also really dumb. Like, yeah. that doesn't make any sense. Uh, so, I have no idea. Yeah, that still doesn't make sense that they would open the package not even in the privacy of their own, like, shitty rat. Also, I got to recycle home. it now, dude. <laughs> like, it's so... And I got to go downstairs yeah. during coronavirus I mean, shit. And it, it also... Yeah, it also doesn't make sense if the mailman stole it because it, it, it no matter who stole it, it doesn't make sense that they would bring the right, box yeah. back. You're right. That's just like what the fuck sadistic. Unless we shit got a new that? super villain fucking criminal like, on our hands. I was gonna say you got the fucking uh, Zodiac <laughs> killer. <laughs> the Tom empty Cruise. box bandit. <laughs> they call me the. They call me. They call me the Prime. Time they call me bandit Optimus Prime. I only steal. <laughs> they call well. I, it's not because Amazon Prime. It's because I really like Transformers. I really like trucks. Um, uh. <laughs> I really like trucks, too. You ever seen Bumblebee? It's like he's a car. He's not even one of the <laughs> truck ones. <laughs> um, Guys, we, we shouldn't joke. Uh, you're right. I'm sorry. Yeah, That's insensitive to Optimus Prime. <laughs> yes, Transformers is sacred ground. Like like my boy Gandhi <laughs> once said, Mega, mega Fox. <laughs> <laughs> Just Mega Fox. And on that note. <laughs> on that, on that note. note <laughs> bye. 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 bye.